Hello, Jeff here from Whip Bird Botanical today with another terrarium build. Um, well, it's actually three terrariums, but it's a little set that I'm making to go on my kitchen windowsill. Alongside the windowsill terrarium I had made uh, the, about a month ago now. Because these are so small, I decided just to have the charcoal be the drainage layer. And then I mix it in with some sand so that that would fill the gaps in to keep the main substrate out. Um, so after the drainage layer, I obviously added the substrate and that's just the same mix I used for my native plant, uh, Australian native plant terrarium. So yeah, then I moved on to hardscaping. So to start with, on the sort of round one, I just used, and this sort of goes across all of them, I just used mostly uh, gravel because there's like, they're nice sort of small rocks and sticks that I found in my yard so this is just um, this first one I just sort of built up the back a little bit with the substrate and then I tried to kind of create what looked a little bit like a creek flowing through and maybe some branches or roots or something coming over the creek And with this square one, I actually managed to get a little piece of lava rock into the um, into the scape. So I placed that in the center, and then I just used some gravel around for some bit of, some details, and added in like a twig at, twig at the front just for a little bit of wood in there. And with this hex one, I sort of try to make the stick on the right hand side look a bit like a stump, like an old tree that had come down. And I place the other, another piece of sort of stick across the front, across the middle, which I thought might be sort of the higher parts of the other one's trunk. And when it snapped off, it had fallen down there. And then, yeah, just scattered in some, some gravel and stuff to try and make a little bit of a what might be again sort of going for that creek line sort of style I try to make it look a bit like a watercourse and build the substrate up on the sides to um, sort of try and get that that, um, that effect I then moved on to planting. With this hex one, I used a combination of thread moss and, well, it was mostly thread moss and then a little piece of liverwort in the front there, which I thought looked kind of cool. And yeah, so I just sort of tried to make it look like sort of vegetation on the banks of a creek. Again, trying to go with that creek line aesthetic. And I think it came out pretty well in the end.
with this square square um, squarish chart. It's not really a square, but it's somewhat square. I used again. I used some thread moss because that's the main moss I had around at the time. But I also put in a little bit of what I think is star moss. And at the back, I built the back up with a different sort of moss. I I'm pretty sure it's some sort of sphagnum moss, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I need to try and get a better get a a proper ID on that. It's just kind of, it's a bit difficult to find good, um, good resources for IDing mosses. It's a, like, it's sort of, when it comes to IDing just normal, like, um, vast villa plants, there's quite a bit out there, especially for the region I live in, but, um, and they're, and they're really good, but mosses, it's kind of, it's sort of hard to find good resources on that. There's a few online um, things, but, it's still, if <laughs> you don't really know the basics, it's kind of hard to navigate and figure out even just something as simple as like where to start. Like with vascular plants, it's quite easy to, I'm not saying it's necessarily easy, but looking at flower types or leaf shapes or the way something's growing, you can usually narrow it down at least a bit. So even if it's just narrowing it down to sort of twiners or climbers or grasses or something like that you can normally narrow it down somewhat um and yeah flowers again like they help a lot because you can a lot of time flower shape can narrow it down to um even a family so yeah with the with the square one i had that sort of taller i think it's sphagnum moss in the back and then i've just put a little bit of thread moss in the front and a Tiny piece of star moss in the middle. And then with the sort of round terrarium, I've sort of got my the round jar. I built that up using um, so I built that up using mostly star moss, but what I sort of noticed after a couple days of the terrarium being completed was and sealed up was that there's actually a little bit of thread moss mixed in with the star moss so that was really cool and it made for some it's made for a bit of a more interesting dynamic because i only used well I, well I thought i'd only use star moss in the whole build and it's just yeah added a bit more texture a bit of layering um a little bit of height in some areas of the moss but yeah so that's that's how it, that's the three of them that's how i did them and i'm really happy with how they turned out the designs come, came came together just on a whim. I was just sort of working with the materials, just placing them in, seeing what happened, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. At first, the when I first finished them, I I really liked the hex the sort of hexagonal jar, and I think that's probably still my second favorite. But my least favorite was the round jar. But now now that it's sort of grown in a, a little bit, it's become my favorite jar. I really like it. But they look really great as a set. But yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Um, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on my next one. Bye for now.